So on TikTok comment that said I had to rebuild the Saints with Derek Carr. Well, since those guys are always the pinnacle of brilliance, today we're going to be rebuilding the Saints with Derek Carr. And uh, I don't really even know what that means because I'm going to level with you. I don't think Derek Carr is going to be the answer for this Saints squad, uh, at least not in Madden. He's not going to develop. He's not going to be highly rated. Yet, we are going to do whatever it takes to build a championship team around Derek Carr. Strap in. It is also important to note that this was recorded before the huge Carolina Panthers move up to number one. Shouldn't affect the video too much, but that should be known. So because I wanted to load in at the Super Bowl week, I couldn't choose a custom roster. So Derek Carr is not on the team yet. I'll be trading him over. And I also am gonna have to trade over the Broncos first round pick from getting Sean Payton. The Broncos still probably have that, right? Yes. So I'm going to need that. That's mine. I can't do those things before I re-sign players. I don't want to risk the CPU, you know, making mistakes that I don't want them to make. So I'm going to have to re-sign anybody that I actually want to still be on the team. But if you know anything about the Saints, you know their money situation is not good. Now, it's way better in real life than it actually is represented in the game. However... Uh, it is still less than ideal. Now, it says we have 40 mil in cap space, but I'm going to guess that's because Michael Thomas is not being represented in that figure. And there are, you know, plenty of players like Rashid Shahid, even, who's actually a very good young player for the Saints, you know, that we are going to want to have back. Jawan Johnson, Malcolm Roach, even. Hook him, but probably don't want him. Let's see. Jarvis Landry can go. Don't really need Blake Gillikin. Marcus Davenport is probably the tough one in here. I wouldn't do more than a three-year deal. He wants two years, about eight mil. I can do that very easily. Very easily to Marcus Davenport. So he's going to return. I'd like to be able to develop him. I don't think there's a, you know, a chance that it's a guarantee we can make him good. No, we're going to try. David Onyemata is going to have to go. Jawan Johnson, I would like back. He's not really interested in being here. I will overpay him. I think he's a good option. 26 years old. You know, is he ever going to be higher than, say, an 80 overall? Not exactly sure on that one. I think there's the potential for it. But I do want to bring him back. And Jawan Johnson is back long term. So we're already kind of running out of money a bit. Caden Ellis has star dev. That's interesting. Tano Passanio, I think, signed an extension. But he's... I, I don't know that for a fact. And he only has normal dev. And he's only a 69 overall. Despite, I feel like, playing better than that in real life. Uh, so I'm probably just going to have to avoid him. And even Rashid Shahid probably will never develop. I'll try to bring him back. He's back for three years. He's probably never going to be much for us. And then Michael Thomas is like the real wild card. He wants a ton of money. It is just not going to happen. He is 30 years old. He only has star dev. He is only an 86 overall. I will franchise tag him and potentially explore a trade avenue. I am trading Michael Thomas immediately to the Chicago Bears. Is it the most realistic thing in the world? Maybe, maybe not. We're getting a third round pick in exchange for him. I think that's good. You know, we're going to need uh, a little bit of cap room to get Derek Carr even on the roster in the first place. I'm going to trade over the first round pick from the Broncos to the Saints. Everyone always asks how to do this. It's not very difficult. All you have to do is just change your, your coach. You become the Broncos, you become the Saints, become whoever you want and make whatever you want happen. Man, Derek Carr. Star Dev. 75 overall, 32 years old. Uh, I'm not stoked on that. And Derek Carr has made it to this Saints team. I don't know what's going on with Alvin Kamara. I'm going to level with you again. We're going to keep this a really level rebuild. I have no idea what's going to happen to him. There are, some, there are some charges against him. He seems guilty, allegedly. He, well... You type in Alvin Kamara on Google, and the number one people also ask is, what's going on with Alvin Kamara? <laughs> what's that little rascal up to? Now, he has pled not guilty to battery charges. Better plug him in. Kind of ironic to get a battery charge. I don't know. 
I don't know what's, what his NFL career is going to look like from here on out. If there is one, you know, due process, whatever. But just don't know what's going to happen to him. So for the purposes of this video, we are going to rock out with him as our running back for as long as we can. He is 28, superstar dev. Maybe he stays at around 87 overall for a little while. But I think we should probably look toward a replacement. The offensive line. Really hope we can develop Trevor Penning, Cesar Ruiz, Eric McCoy, Ryan Ramchek. That's a good offensive line. Andrews Peep might want to look another way. Uh, and then defensively, a ton of talent, just some aging talent, unfortunately. Tyra Matthew, Demario Davis, Cam Jordan, all older. And especially in the case of Demario Davis at only an 85 overall, despite being one of the best linebackers in the league, I don't know what we can do with that. He's only going to get worse. Cam Jordan down to an 83 overall. Guess what? Only going to get worse. And that's why their overalls are lower than they usually might be otherwise because we are into the offseason where progression and regression happens and they are regressing heavily. So we got a lot of fixes to make. Marshawn Lattimore is good. Outside of that, I really don't know what we have. And then on offense, we got Chris Olave and... That feels about it. This is this is not going to go well. So we are down to essentially no cap room, you know, hopefully. Or did the CPU sign anybody for us? They didn't, uh, thankfully. But we're down to essentially no cap room. We're going to have to work with that. It's going to clear up after about a year or so. But right now, we are in a bit of a tough spot for cap room. We're going to go straight to the draft and see what we can do at number 30. And yes, the Saints actually pick at number 29 overall, but because Madden doesn't know that the Dolphins have forfeited a first round pick, that of course does not apply. We're just going to simulate straight there. I don't think I'm going to trade up. I'm just going to see what's available and make a decision based on that. I don't really know what the Saints are going to do at this spot, to be honest. There are a number of different ways they could go. It just kind of depends how the board falls. And there are some really good corners that have stuck around in Joey Porter Jr. and Cam Smith. Definitely very tempted by that. We could add a ton of speed at receiver and go Jalen Hyatt. Probably going to veer away from tight end. I think it's going to end up being a corner just because, I mean, Joey Porter's on the board. I feel like that's got to be the guy. You know, I'm hoping some of these receivers will be available uh, with our second round pick. We are not too far away from it. So let's go ahead and take advantage of Joey Porter Jr. sliding down the board a little bit. I don't think he's going to be here in real life. I'm going to take him anyway. Joey Porter Jr., welcome to the Saints. 91 speed, 91 acceleration, good agility and change of direction. Only normal development because not everybody can have star or superstar or superstar X Factor. It limits you in the draft class creator. But Joey Porter Jr. is what looks to be for us a long-term upgrade. Hopefully we can develop him. But admittedly, normal dev is going to be a little bit tough. There goes Luke Musgrave. And I think with this pick, we should be able to target a receiver. Anton Harrison's still here. A couple of corners. Darnell Washington feels like a good fit. And a lot of the receivers are off the board already. Zay Flowers is still here. Jameer Gibbs, though, is, is standing out to me as a potential Alvin Kamara replacement. And man, that's, that's really something I'm considering. He's kind of like an Alvin Kamara type player. You know, good hands out of the backfield. He's way faster than Kamara is the difference. Uh, and maybe a little bit less of a tank. But Jameer Gibbs, man, I really, really like. Do I take a running back here? I'm going to. I'm going to look to replace Alvin Kamara long term. We take Jameer Gibbs. Big time addition to the team. 94 speed, 94 acceleration. Now, I'd like to come back up for Zay Flowers. I would like to be able to do that or a different receiver if it comes to it, but I didn't think we had to stay put and take him right there. I mean, some of the interior offensive linemen could not uh, be bad options for us either. Zay Flowers is supposed to go in a little bit. Darnell Wright has fallen quite a bit. He would honestly be pretty incredible value and we could maybe look to move somebody. Kalijah Cansey is still here. Okay, no, we, we have options. We have options. Do I even want to trade up? Two third round picks could have great value with that. But what if we turned, can we turn a three and a four into an earlier two? We probably can. Okay, trading a fourth, a third, and a fifth. 
Wish the order on that was different, but that's what we're doing. We're getting number 44 as a result from the Browns. We will get somebody who we want. Titans, go with Steve Avila. Could end up being a first-round pick. I know I mock him to the Bills in every mock draft. Doesn't mean it will happen, but it, it certainly could. And then I think, I think I've made the decision. I think we're going with Zay Flowers from Boston College. Awesome option for us in the slot. Offers a ton of great speed. I know he bulked up actually to about 180 or so uh, for the combine. As I'm struggling a little bit here, but he should be a good option for us right in the slot. Maybe closer to 5'9 as well. But good speed for the position and will probably play a lot for us right away. As we'll simulate to the third round, don't pick again till the fifth. So we have to make this a good one. Take full advantage. Some receivers still on the board. Kalijah Kansi could be a first round pick. I'm going to take Kalijah Kansi here. Can't really pass on that. Only normal development. It's tough with a, a defensive tackle who's six foot 280, but ton of acceleration, a ton of speed, and hopefully will be a nice option for us. Hey, there goes Deuce Vaughn. This is our last pick of the draft. What do I want? Kitral Clark could be an awesome option in the slot for us. Pretty underrated prospect. Do I want to take another corner? They're different types. So the answer ends up being ultimately, yes, I do. And listen, I know that we already have some corners on the team, but how good do I feel about Bradley Roby, Austin Debo? I don't know if we can develop him. We'll get another guy in the room. Bradley Roby's going to end up being gone. And now we have three or four good corners that we can at least count on for the future. So Cottrell Clark, welcome to the Saints. And we'll start the next season, 2023. So, Joey Porter Jr. is a 75 overall. Not too bad. Could potentially earn the starting job on the outside uh, with Marshawn Lattimore. Now, Jameer Gibbs might have been our best pick, at least from an overall perspective. 79 overall receiving back. Probably not going to have him wear number 13. But Jameer Gibbs uh, is a really, really fun player and is someone that should be a highly rated player. Is a running back, but is one of the better receiving threats in the entire draft period. I know he led Alabama uh, in receiving yards. And it seems crazy to say, you know, because he is a running back, you're like, oh, how can that be one of the better receiving threats? But just when you fully picture everything he has to offer, and we're going to give him Reggie Bush's 25, why not? Jameer Gibbs can be a game changer for an offense. Excited to see him. Zay Flowers at a 74 overall is not too bad. Kalijah Kansi, 72. Control Clark, 71. I think that's a decent draft class for us. Everybody above 70. We have some potential starters long-term. Our cap room is not in a good spot, negative five and a half million or so. But again, that's because of future contracts factoring in. So things will get better, I promise. Uh, but the Derek Carr edition is not cheap. I know people are not going to be thrilled with my draft here, but we got our Alvin Kamara replacement. Deontay Hardy is a return man. And Zay Flowers will move up and probably be our receiver two right away. Happier to play him than Traquan Smith. Rashid Shahid, I want to play more as well. A lot of speed at the receiver position, which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Defensive tackles in a really bad spot. Peyton Turner, former first round pick, really have not uh, done much there. Could potentially move him inside to defensive tackle just because we're so weak there. Maybe do the same with Carl Granderson as well. Kind of thought he would be a little bit older than 26. I remember him coming out in the draft. Would have guessed that he was probably closer to 28. But we're going to go ahead and move him to defensive tackle. I think we're going to go ahead and start him. We're going to be weak at, at certain positions. That's just the reality of a rebuilding team, which is what I think the Saints are going to be. Zach Bond, Pete Warner should probably have star dev. But, you know, we are at the mercy of who's already on the team, unfortunately. Joey Porter Jr. is going to move up. Paulson Adebo is going to move up to CB3. He'll play in the nickel, probably. And then we'll develop Elante Taylor. I know people are going to be mad. I double-dipped on corner with Elante Taylor. But Roby's not going to be here. So Lattimore, Joey Porter Jr. was good value. Paulson Adebo, Elante Taylor, Cottrell Clark. I think that's a good group. And again, Bradley Roby is not going to be here. How much is left on his contract is an interesting question. So two years, it's not very expensive actually, but I am going to look to trade him. I thought the uh, CPU somehow gave us Noah Sewell, but it's not. It's their other brother, 
uh, from Utah, and he's not going to play. Not that Noah Sewell is some amazing prospect. It'll be interesting to see how he ends up developing if given the opportunity, but you know, he'd be an upgrade over who we currently have. Ooh, Jameer Gibbs has asked a lot of questions. Long-term development. Boost him up, Alvin. Boost him up. Yeah, Jameer Gibbs, good head on his shoulders. You would know, Alvin. Great judge of character. But that is not a bad upgrade. Jameer Gibbs has been upgraded from superstar, what he clearly would have had to have earlier, to superstar X-Factor. It's probably one of the most favorite meetings we've ever had. Alvin Kamara doing us a solid. Hey, hey, you want to upgrade my replacement? Sure, dude, I'd love to. Now, nobody really wants Bradley Roby. Ooh, we could get Leo Chanel, though. That actually might be the move. Now, I don't think the Chiefs would do that in real life. Well, fortunate for us, this is not real life. I'm going to go ahead and take Leo Chanel for Bradley Roby. It just... We don't need corners right now. I think we have good depth at the position. We could use linebackers. So Chanel's going to fill that role. He'll play over Zach Bond, I would guess. And Leo Chanel actually jumps up to a 71 overall at outside linebacker. Still trying to wrap my mind around how it's Chanel and not Chanel. But it is Leo Chanel. Uh, slide Alante Taylor down just because I value the dev trait of Paulson Adebo a little bit more. And it looks like Joey Porter Jr., uh, could actually potentially play in the slot for us, although the CPU has rearranged it so that Paulson Adebo is there, which I prefer anyway. Peyton Turner as a rush D tackle, not too bad. Uh, I'm not going to be saying Jabari's last name, but you can see it. And listen, I know, I know what it is. Um, but we'll uh, we'll go ahead and simulate to about the midseason mark. There are a lot of upgrades we need to make with this team. Do I trade Traquan Smith? Do I make him trade Quan Smith? Oh, Cam Jordan only has a year left. Now, it's going to give us a ton of money, but it would be devastating to trade a player like that who was so influential to this franchise. I mean, other than Drew Brees, is that not the best Saint of the past decade or so? Probably is, right? I mean, I know Michael Thomas had a great you know, stretch. But Cam Jordan is just, he's just the man. I think everyone would agree with that. Uh, am I going to see what type of offers I can get for him? A couple of corners I don't really need. We could work something out for Cam Jordan. It's just, do I want to? Do I want to go through the pain? I don't know. Now, adding in Traquan Smith and things start to get a little bit more interesting. There are actually some really good players that we could get like Brian O'Neill, don't necessarily need him. Alex Highsmith is kind of the one that's standing out to me right now, just because we need edge rusher so badly, because Cam Jordan is just, he's not going to be here. I can't extend him. But Alex Highsmith, on the other hand, is trending the other way, does have superstar development as well. Yeah, we're going to get Alex Highsmith. That's the move. Just like a Band-Aid, just rip it off. Rip it off. Traquan Smith and Cam Jordan to Pittsburgh. We receive Alex Highsmith in return. I know the end of an era. It's tough. Would that trade happen in real life? You know, probably not unless the Steelers see themselves as a competitor right now and the Saints are not and want Cam Jordan for a run, whereas Alex Highsmith potentially uh, looking for a new contract. Maybe the Steelers want to, or don't want to meet those demands. There are some scenarios where I guess you could rationalize it. I don't think it would happen. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I don't think it's especially likely. All right, let's set up our scouts here. We could draft a quarterback. I know this is the rebuild with Derek Carr, but he's on the team. We're still going to look at potential other options. Now, David Rush, 6'3", 226, fits the mold of what a big quarterback build could be. Now, went to Ohio. Now, we know the Saints love Ohio. Uh, just, it's Ohio State usually that they're getting from. I don't think Terrell Basham's ever played on the Saints. Now, the strengths of the class, right tackle, corner, and wide receiver, the weaknesses, left outside linebacker, center, and tight end. So we're going to go ahead and fire Isaac Allison here. Uh, and, man, Allison gone just after... 
International Women's Day, too. We take out Kim for that reason? Ah, we'll leave him. Is there a free agent scout that has both quarterback and wide receiver? That's kind of what I'm interested in. Now, I did see one, but they were not three-star. I want three-star on quarterback and receiver. Uh, probably not the best way to do this. Quarterback and safety. What an interesting niche. Andre Risen is in here. Former NFL receiver for at least the Falcons. I think played for the Bills, too. Oh, also, Calvin Johnson. You guys probably heard of him before. Andre Risen never played for the Bills. He played for the Chiefs was the other big one, but mostly the Falcons. Uh, we'll hire Calvin Johnson to be our two-star scout and just get a different three-star. It could be quarterback still, but I think I'm going to go Travis Bailey. Defensive end and defensive tackle. Defensive line is going to be a need for us, for sure. So, you know, it, it doesn't not, or exactly fit with the region. But we needed something there. Unfortunately, only two and five at the midseason mark. Our draft pick will be nice and high. That's a cool thing, I guess. Now, Alex Highsmith is going to be a free agent. Does not want to be here, by the way. Is upset that we traded for him. But get used to it. You're a saint. I'm going to bring him back. And people have asked me to do the no hostages rebuild, where I'm not allowed to negotiate with anybody in the red for interest. But... That's not this video. Highsmith, very low risk. He doesn't like the scheme. I want to play 3-4 outside linebacker. Oh, shut up, dude. All right, he's back. Cesar Ruiz is back for five years. He only wanted two. But I don't want to give him two. So he's... <laughs> and I don't even know that I have two to give, if you know what I mean. Uh, Deontay Hardy. Don't want to make any assumptions here. But uh, I don't think he's going to ever be an impactful player for us, unfortunately. Can't really pay him that type of money. I know it's not significant, but can't do it. Carl Granderson doesn't really want to be here. I mean, nobody wants to play for us right now. Jameis Winston's got to go. I would rather just have the money and have a little bit more flexibility and free agency. Continue to develop some of the talent. And we can make decisions about some of these players long term. That can definitely happen. But for right now... I'm not going to negotiate. How's the quarterback look? Oh, interesting. Interesting. B, medium, deep, and short accuracy. Throw under pressures unknown. But I don't mind that for accuracy. Athleticism seems to be okay. Although, change of direction and acceleration, both could be elite. A, throw on the run. A, awareness. He truly is an improviser type of quarterback. I wish he had more of an arm on him. But could I see that being, you know, a great future option for us at the quarterback position? Yeah, I could. And then Ernie Archer, not really much of an athlete, but boy, is he strong. A to C finesse moves and power moves, although it's likely one or the other. Could be an option for us. Definitely not thrilled on some of these other quarterbacks, I'll tell you that. Really, really not. Maybe Ladarius Allen could be something. Uh, man, he's not an athlete. If we're going quarterback, it's pretty much got to be David Rush. Maybe Zach Triplett has some redeeming qualities to him. Not really. I, I You know, he could be okay, but probably going to avoid him. Although this tight end looks really, really good in the mid-rounds. I would say Troy Schaefer will probably end up being a saint. Maybe something changes. I don't want to exactly guarantee that. But I, I, I think there's a decent chance. Although John Hutchinson in the same range looks really intriguing as well. So this could be a draft where you spend a mid-round pick on a tight end. And even Philip Stanford here. Now he's got the Stanford pedigree at tight end, even though he went to Alabama. He, he fitted into the name. Looks to be a really good athlete. Looks to be a really good receiving option. Okay, maybe Philip Stanford's the guy if we want to take a tight end. There seems to be a lot of really good value in this draft. I'm pretty stoked about it, to be honest. Uh, Jermaine May, maybe could even add to that. Great to elite strength. Oh, man. We might have a mid-round warrior type draft. Even undrafted center, he's not going to be very strong probably, but has a pass block. There is a value to that. Very, very weak. Poor to marginal strength, but could end up making the team, I would say. The good thing about being bad is we are going to have our choice of pretty much whoever we want. So you got you to gotta look at it from that angle. It doesn't seem quite so bad. But unfortunately, I, yeah, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot for us. 
in this season in terms of playoff success. I really think we need a quarterback. I'm going to be honest. Here we got combining the best running back of all time, Barry Gore. You got the most elusive running back of all time, Barry Sanders, and the oldest running back of all time, Frank Gore. Those are the two best. One and two all time. Not really like an amazing athlete, but there could be something there. Linebacker is still a position of need for us. I'm a little bit upset with the athletic level of a lot of these players. I, I need athletes on the team. I'm not really sure we have that. We'll have to see what the back half of the season looks like. But yeah, I obviously expect us to miss the playoffs here after a 2-5 and five start. Uh, are we going to lose 10 or 11 games? Yeah, maybe. I think it probably evens out a little bit. I don't think we quite finished that badly. But you never know. It can happen. And uh, we'll just prepare for the offseason. 2023 is a building year, which you can't really afford to do when you bring in a veteran quarterback like that in the game. Now, in real life, who knows? Derek Carr's 32. His best season could be his age 35 year. Like, that could happen. That happens with quarterbacks. Now, in game, in Madden, it won't happen. It will not happen. We finish 7-10. and 10. Not where we wanted to be, obviously. But... It is what it is. Derek Carr, 4,400 passing yards, 27 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. Rushing Alvin Kamara got the bulk of the carries, but Jameer Gibbs was, uh, you know, getting his fair share of touches in the number two role. But it's interesting that he only averaged 3.3 yards per carry as the third down running back. Like you think Alvin Kamara would, as the power back would be getting those short yardage carries, but he averaged a full yard plus more. Than Jameer Gibbs per carry? Is he just not ready yet? I mean, he, he's got superstar X Factor. He's going to end up playing over Alvin Kamara, I can promise you. Receiving Chris Olave, what a year. 117 catches. He might go up to superstar dev. 1,600 yards, five touchdowns. A Flowers find the end zone uh, nine times. Rashid Shahid wasn't even bad either. Juwan Johnson was okay. And then defensively, a ton of tackles for both Pete Warner and Demario Davis, including 10 for loss for Davis. But look at this rookie season from Kalijah Kansi. 18 tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, not bad. Seven sacks for Davenport and Highsmith tied for the team lead. And then a bunch of interceptions. Tyre Matthew with four, three for Warner, three for Demario Davis and Marshawn Lattimore. All in all, though, we were just not good enough. I think that's clear. Don't need to talk about that for too long. The 28th ranked offense, the 25th ranked defense. We got to get better on both sides of the ball. And I plan on doing that in this offseason. Let's go get after it. Well, Bengals beat the Bucks in the Super Bowl, the 11 and 6 Bucks. They got out into the playoffs, out of the first round, out of the second round, into the Super Bowl. And unfortunately for them, lost to the Bengals, but they got there which is a surprise to me. Josh Allen won MVP. We didn't have any of the rookies of the year, unfortunately. Anthony Richardson with the Bucks actually, would have been the first rookie quarterback to start and win a Super Bowl for his team. And then Jalen Carter of the Seahawks, which could actually end up happening in real life. I don't know if it will, but it could potentially. We have 53.7 mil now to negotiate with. Will Lutz is a free agent. We're going to keep that that way. Deontay Hardy, Carl Granderson, Adam Troutman, Zach Bond even don't really want to be here. That's okay. We're going to save the money. We got to shed some of the dead weight. We do. Give me some dev trade upgrades, though. That's what I'm, I'm really most interested in right now. I would like to see Chris Olave at Superstar. I'd like to see Kalijah Kansi at Star. Those would be some things I would like to see. Olave stays at Star. Zay Flowers is Star unfortunate. And then defensively, Kalijah can't see to go up to star. That's big. Peyton Turner went up to star. Pete Warner went up to star. Tyron Matthew, I think, went up to superstar X Factor. So we do get some nice upgrades in there. Nothing like earth shattering, but it's a process. You got to trust the process. All right, air in free agency. Nick Bosa, oh, Quinn and Williams, man. It's funny that New Orleans isn't a big market because they have such a big fan base or passionate fan base, but New Orleans really is a way smaller city than you probably think. It is not very populated compared to other big cities. Uh, Chris Lindstrom, though, could be a great fit. I really would like both of these, though. Quinn Williams and Chris Lindstrom would be phenomenal additions to the team. Justin Herbert, you're just not going to have the money in order to pull that off. 
But man, if we can somehow get Chris Lindstrom and Quinn and Williams, we could completely turn our defense and offense around. I think we have next to no shot on Quinn and Williams. So never mind. Okay, so when you look at the players I've targeted, it's Tremaine Edmonds, Isaiah Simmons, who we should be able to get, Ed Oliver, Matt Gay, a kicker, and Natani Muti to play left guard. I might end up increasing my offer on Tremaine Edmonds and Ed Oliver. I want to make sure we get some of these players we actually target. And you know, in order to do that, you got to shell out a little bit of cash. So Ed Oliver, I think, will end up being on the team. Want to guarantee we get him over over uh, Denver. And then Tremaine Edmonds is going to be expensive, man. Uh, he really, really is. In order to do so, we might have to uh, probably withdraw the offer from Matt Gay. Get a little bit more negotiating room with Tremaine Edmonds. And still probably up the money. It's a lot of money for an inside linebacker. But I think the age really makes that, you know... A really good deal for us just because he's going to end up being really really good so i think these are the guys we're going after hopefully we'll able to or we're able to sign them and we'll advance here and we brought in tremaine edmonds we brought in ed oliver and we got natani muti as well so now the steelers are going after isaiah simmons kind of annoying he didn't sign but Tremaine Edmonds will start. Obviously, these will all be starters. The only one that's a little bit finicky is Natani Mutsi because we could potentially trade him uh, or just have him as a depth piece for us, which is not as important on the offensive line in the game. Uh, Andrews Pete is someone that now is potentially a cap casualty. We'll free nearly $12 million in cap room, get a penalty of $6.5 million. He's going to get cut. That's just what's going to happen. I can try and trade him. I don't know if there's going to be anything... Uh, interesting for us there in terms of offers, but maybe there is. But defensively, this is where things get really, really big because Ed Oliver starts, Kalijah Kansi uh, starts, obviously. And then when Demario Davis regresses completely, which is now, I can trade him. I know it, it sucks, but I, I got to try and get something for him. So we'll trade Demario Davis. Tremaine Edmonds will start at the mic. Leo Chanel will continue to play. And then why would I get Isaiah Simmons? It's a good question. Well, I think he's going to end up playing outside linebacker for us, or we could even start him over Marcus May. Got to love the flexibility that Isaiah Simmons would offer you in the game. May is already regressing. He is 31, man. He feels younger than that. I think, I think it's maybe May and Demario Davis that are going to get packaged in the same deal. And... Chanel starts, and then Isaiah Simmons plays strong safety. I don't love it, but it's what we're going to have to try and do right now. Now, he just still might end up going to Pittsburgh. Real chance that that happens, and it's exactly what ended up happening. Justin Herbert to the Raiders, by the way. Looks like they finally managed to upgrade over Derek Carr. Uh, but yeah, I think it might just be better to save money. It, it, we're going to have to. Could get Darnell Mooney. We're going to have some options here. Braden Smith wouldn't be bad. Although, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a safety. Brees Hall would be kind of sick, but we obviously don't need him. TJ Edwards wouldn't be that bad. Um, we got to get a safety. I wish I could say, hey, get offers for what we're looking for. But it unfortunately does not work that way. The Bills would not have a safety I'm interested in. Yeah, Micah Hyde. Maybe Jordan Poyer is still there, although I would doubt it. Maybe both of them are gone. No, Micah Hyde's still there. But I want somebody a little bit younger, somebody that we can actually develop, and also, importantly, somebody that actually has the money to take on these contracts, which don't seem to be a lot of teams right now. Julian Blackman, I guess, is an option. Not one at the top of my list right now, but it might end up being the best option for us. I think I'm going to make this trade with the Giants. It's going to be Marcus May and Demario Davis for Xavier McKinney. He's 26 years old. He's going to start at strong safety for us. We'll have Tyron Matthew for as long as we can keep him. Still a little bit older. Not really a reliable option for us in the back end long term. But because of his superstar X Factor ability, he at least gives us a little bit of a window, right? Uh, maybe he'll slide over to strong safety so I can get these scheme fit rocking. But he's still at least viable for right now. But the window is going to close out on that pretty quickly. So we have to capitalize with a big, big, big draft and develop these guys still. Development's going to be so huge. 
It's also possible that Jameer Gibbs was somehow playing fullback for us and getting like fullback dives and stuff. Not sure how often those actually get run in the playbook, but it could happen, could impact that yards per carry number. But I can't worry about that right now. Maybe we'll sign an undrafted rookie free agent fullback or draft one, although I would doubt that. Okay, private workout time. Get a better idea about some of these players up to this point. Do I not have Rush on my my draft board here? I don't, which is weird. But he could end up being our first pick. Good athlete. He's got a good arm. Nothing spectacular. He's just good. He could be well-rounded enough where... You know, it, it could be advantageous for us to draft him. Not confident on that. Austin Ware with A awareness and then all those A to C's is at least worth checking out in round two to three. So we're going to look at him. So we have a top 10 pick. If we wanted to draft the quarterback, we would have to move up. I don't think I'm going to do it. I think we're going to stay put. There are some good options down the board. You know, I'm not sure that we're going to go ahead and even stick at number nine. Could be a trade down spot. Uh, maybe get some value for next year. I took a look at some of the safeties. Kasim Huff is not a bad option. Bees across the board is a pretty solid athlete. The value in this draft, even though it seems rare, uh, is just down the board. It's just not at the top of the draft for me. And even Rashad Kincaid looks incredible. Great athlete. A hit power. Zone coverage isn't amazing, but B man, B tackle. Very interested. Yeah, I'd love to trade down. Oh, we don't even have mid-round picks. We got to trade down in that case. So it's 2024. Can I pick up a 2024, like around 20 or something? Eagles could be a, a team worth negotiating for. They would give us two first round picks in order to move down, but that's down to 26. I'm not sure I want to go down quite that far. The trade we're going to make work here is number nine, Andrus Pete, and a third round pick next year. To the Patriots, we're getting number 18, number 50, and a second round pick next year. Taking a bit of a gamble here, but we really are only moving down to number 18. I think we're going to be in a bit, uh, pretty good spot. And we're going to take Rashad Kincaid here, the safety from Boise State, going down with the likes of great Boise State safeties like... Darwin, not Darwin Thompson. Ooh, what, what is his name? Darwin Thompson was Utah State running back. Uh, he got drafted by the Giants, dude. He ended up on the Cowboys. I'm not far from his name. Why can I not think of it? It's not Damian. Darian Thompson. Why did I forget that? I don't think I was coming up with Darian, though. But I was so close. Anyway weird to shout out a person i can't even remember rashad kincaid though 61213 good good ability good athleticism i think he's going to be a great pick for us only normal development but 92 speed and acceleration pretty great for a safety good agility and change direction too yeah i i think he could be somebody that we end up developing a hit power is fun be tackling i just think he's a really good option i would be surprised if he wasn't at least a 75 overall now i took a gamble here simulating all the way to the middle of the second round Hopefully it paid off. Man, that left tackle I was looking at is gone. I didn't even bother to check if he was any good. So that's on me. But I don't know that I would have taken him anyway. We don't necessarily need tackle. It just would have been to sure up the offensive line spot, which is just, you know, we, we signed a Tani Muti anyway. Jermaine May is somebody that, I mean, elite agility and elite strength is kind of a crazy combination, no? Uh, you know, it might be somebody we just, we look to uh, potentially fight for a starting job. I think we are going to end up with a tight end in this draft. Anytime you see a 6-3 corner, it's intriguing, but we don't necessarily need that. Man, this defensive tackle ran 4-7-7. Seven, seven. A finesse moves. I just worry, I worry, do we already have this player in Kalijah Kansi? The values there, we're just going to take him. 87 strength to go with 80 speed, 81 acceleration. Also, star or better development. A finesse moves. B awareness. C block shed. And could fight for a job. I don't know that that was the best pick there for our needs, but it was the one we ended up making. And there are still some pretty good tight ends on the board. The top guy is not on the board any longer. But is that a good thing? Because Philip Stanford is here. He's the one. 
He's the one. Great speed, ran at sub 4.6 at 268 pounds. Oh, I, this is the closest thing we're going to find to Darnell Washington in the draft. Elite jumping, great speed, great strength. Only B run blocking. Don't care. Welcome to the team. Only 84 speed is low for somebody that ran as fast as he did. Uh, 85 acceleration. Only normal development. Kind of stinks. But I feel like he was kind of a freak. I'm, I'm actually shocked to see his dev trait not be at least star. Man, in the fourth round, everybody is off the board that I had. Every single player. That is nuts. What about Terrence Singh, though? B catching traffic, B release. Not a great athlete. Probably don't need him. Another safety. Seems to be a good enough athlete. B tackle, B hit power. I think the zone coverage is going to be really bad. But not bad depth for special teams with that build. 89 speed, 88 acceleration. I'm not sure we had the best draft that we could have. Which is okay. Not everyone's going to be amazing. We'll see after, of course, with the overalls. Could be, could be a draft where we get a kicker. This is the one. Oh my goodness, Craig Price. Great kick power is rare to see with a kick accuracy. Welcome to the team. 94 kick power. That is our kicker of the future. Love that. I found an unbelievable fullback. Christopher Brown. Good acceleration, elite agility, good change of direction, elite jumping, good speed, elite strength, and he's got a run block. This is the guy. This is the guy. That's our fullback. Chris Brown. Oh, no. <laughs> Rihanna, watch out, dude. I know you just played the halftime show. My fullback is not to be trifled with. A awareness punter. He's only got D accuracy. Decent kick power. We're going to draft a punter. 89 kick power. Doesn't feel like it's that bad. All right, here's what we have. Rashad Kincaid is a 75 overall. Greg Griffin is a 71 who we drafted. The tight end is only a 72, which isn't so bad for a backup tight end, but wish he was a little bit better. Rudy Smiley, the special team's god, is a 68. Our kicker's a 73. Pretty good, actually. Fullback's a 75. And then Brent Wagner is a seven, or excuse me, a 68. Now, the rest of the class uh, was not good. Highest overall player was a fourth-round running back. And then a left guard that went in top 10. Other than that, it's just random players throughout the draft. 76 was the next highest, and there were only three of those guys. So we took the wrong safety, I guess. Kevin Portis would have been slightly better, and especially so because I'm sure he has better than normal. No, he only has normal. I don't know. A pretty not awesome draft, I'll say. Derek Carr down to a 73. Hate to see that. I mean, the team is better but how much better are they? I don't think there's a ton much else to do before this next season. Kamara is somebody that I've considered trading up to this point, obviously. I've said as much. He's got two years left. 2025 is really expensive. 25 mil. I mean, he's just not... He won't be on the Saints in real life up to that point. How are you getting a plus four, Greg Griffin? Any relation to Everson Griffin? Tell me we have a quarterback or two in this class. Please... Two top five projected, two others inside the first round, and then two fringe guys that could be first rounders. Maybe, maybe not. This is more like it. I need one of these guys to be the guy. And one of the strengths of the class is quarterback. It's more like it. Okay, let's hope we can play a little bit better this year. Have some new faces. And, you know, it's important to have depth. Do we have too much of it? <laughs> Uh, we still are not great. Kincaid's actually going to play the slot for us. Don't mind that. All right. Well, hopefully these guys end up playing pretty well. I did notice I had Jameer Gibbs in the slot. I don't want that. I'm going to put Zay Flowers there and then Olave and Rashid Shahid. And I'll see you at the midseason mark. Okay, a little bit better. Three and three. Not incredible by any means, but better than where we were last year. Not by a ton or anything, but better. And quarterback, is that going to be a position I heavily invest in? It will be. Ramon Gomez, Glenn Robinson, both look good. Brennan Peters, maybe we could talk ourselves into with the A throw under pressure and short accuracy. But at that point, we'd probably go Glenn Robinson because the medium accuracy seems like it could be a bit higher. And uh, Ramon Gomez just might be the guy here. 
Great to elite throw power. Maybe a bit of a statue in the pocket, but he seems to be the one. Although Glenn Robinson also has an arm on him. A little bit better of an athlete too. All right, we're getting a quarterback this year. We are getting a quarterback, that I can tell you for certain. This also looks like a potentially generational left tackle prospect. A awareness, A impact, A pass block, A to C on run blocking. Great to elite acceleration, agility, change of direction. And then good to great for speed and strength. He seems like a very, very, very good prospect. Seven players are ready to renegotiate. And are they important players? At least two of them are. Tyre Matthew, Pete Warner, definitely want to have those guys back. Paulson Debo, Peyton Turner is going to be a tough decision. So it's really just those four. A two-year deal for Tyre Matthew makes sense to me. And we can keep him at home. Uh, he wants more money. Okay, no thank you. Uh, maybe. Man, Pete Warner wants to get paid like an edge rusher, which I really don't want to do. I can't, I can't do that, dude. The team isn't right. You want to be here. It says you want to be here. Don't lie about the team. Adebo is back, cheap, painless. I think we're going to ultimately end up bringing back Pete Warner and Tyre Matthew, but man, I really... I do not want to pay Pete Warner as an edge rusher, which is what they want us to do, which is unfortunate how outside linebackers are classed in that same group of linebackers uh, and edge rushers. It's it's silly. Now, I could move his position to middle linebacker. I don't think that would really impact a negotiation. I, I think they still value it from that initial uh, valuation in negotiation. So I don't really think that would do anything. I've tried that before. I don't think it does anything. It's unfortunate, but we are kind of stuck either having to overpay or do something else. Now we go eight and nine, finished second in the division. It is improvement. The roster just is not quite there yet. I think Teddy Bridgewater led the league in passing yards. It's kind of insane. Uh, Derek Carr, not a bad year. Improvement from the year prior, but he's got the player tag bridge quarterback. The game is like, go, go get somebody else. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Alvin Kamara regressed a little bit this year. Jameer Gibbs was about the same, maybe a slight improvement. And then receiving Zay Flowers, great numbers. Olave, 1,100 yards as well, nine touchdowns. Jawan Johnson goes over 1,000 yards with 88 catches and six touchdowns. Great year. Defensively, Tremaine Edmonds, 142 tackles, four for loss, one and a half sacks. Not too bad. And Ed Oliver, have a year. 20 tackles for loss with nine and a half sacks. Alex Highsmith was great too. Marcus Davenport put up 12 sacks. This is great production. Kalijah Kansi was six. And then five interceptions for Tremaine Edmonds. He's already working up to that value. Five picks and 140 tackles should be good enough to be at least in defensive player of the year conversation and consideration, even if he doesn't end up winning it. We'll see yearly awards here quickly. Oh, Lord. Um, what team am I? Saints. Always forget. Brian Burns wins Defensive Player of the Year. Edmonds is at four, though. Best linebacker, maybe. And the Lions beat the Colts in the Super Bowl? What's going on here? And David Rush. Oh, my goodness. The quarterback we passed on, well, we didn't trade up for, I should say, wins Super Bowl MVP as a rookie. Broke the curse of Bobby Lane, hook him, and gave the Lions their first ever Super Bowl. What, what are we even dealing with? Did he have normal dev? How did he not get upgraded? I don't know. Uh, only star dev, 79 overall, but he got it done. Credit to him. Uh, Tyre Matthew has regressed down to an 86. Pete Warner at an 80. He's 27 now. I I cannot give him that contract. Tyron Matthew is maybe a bit of a different question or different different answer, different different something. Uh, Tyron Matthew give you a little bit more money. He's back for two years. That's it. He's gone after that. Pete Warner unfortunately has to walk. We'll pay somebody in free agency, and he was asking for 10 plus million. We can get better value in free agency. Jalen Phillips. I mean, the value is not, it's not here in free agency. Pete Warner is looking for 12.8 per year. Who is paying him that? 
I, I could have considered a franchise tag, too. I just really... I don't expect him to be, you know, a huge interest in free agency. I just don't. I don't really even know what we need to do in free agency. I know it seems crazy given the success of our team so far. I don't know where we can upgrade, really. I know we're only in 83, so, like, surely somewhere, right? But I look on offense. I like receiver. We could use a better one. Options aren't great. The offensive line is good. They just have to keep developing. Kamara has now gone under Jameer Gibbs, so Alvin Kamara will be traded. I know we need a quarterback. And then defensively, linebacker, but I don't have the means to get a better one right now. Ed Oliver, by the way, has gone up to superstar X-Factor. Griffin had star dev. We could potentially use a corner just to, like, firmly get a good option in there like greg newsom's in there we could pay him i don't even think we're gonna get greg newsom to be honest i don't think he's interested enough but uh we will see hopefully he signs with us over the colts and he does okay it's a big upgrade and i think we needed to make a change just joey porter jr not really developing so much because of the normal development unfortunately and then Alante Taylor is not doing much either because he's not playing enough. Paulson Adebo with Star Dev is still not getting upgraded very much. So Alante Taylor maybe has to go. I know a lot of Saints fans love him, but this is video game land. He's just, he was never going to be good enough, unfortunately. So I'm going to go ahead and add him to the trade block in a way. Two second round picks. Alante Taylor and maybe a fourth... We're going to have to move up in the draft, though. Maybe I use Elante Taylor to move up in the draft. We do that. Uh, trading number 50, a fifth, and a sixth to the Chargers for number 34. And number 34 will later be used in a trade. Elante Taylor probably will be involved in a trade. We got to move up for those quarterbacks. Plain and simple. Not much more to it. So Ramon Gomez, we know his true talent is round one to two. And... Unfortunately, so is Glenn Robinson. They're all one to two. I mean, the true talent on all of them is one to two, really. Okay. Round two to three on an undrafted is very interesting. It's not bad. I mean, it's good value, but it doesn't mean he's going to be the guy for us. I think one of these players at the top is going to end up being the guy. Maybe it's just a strong draft class where quarterback, you know, not, not being valued that highly. I do want to check out Antonio Harris just because I think He's going to be sick. I'm very curious what he is, uh, his ranking is. We do have trade offers for Alvin Kamara, funnily enough. And that might be ooh, Devin White. It, it, that would be a crazy interdivisional trade. Ooh, we could trade for Michael Thomas. Seems like that would be great value. Okay, Alvin Kamara and a first moves us up to number two. A very interesting trade. One that you'd have to expect probably wouldn't be accepted in real life due to the value of running back, but that's what we're doing here. Moved all the way up to number two. Uh, did not even trade Elante Taylor in order to do it. Eagles pick at number one. They shouldn't take a quarterback, but I think we are going to at number two. Don't pick again until the second round, but could use Elante Taylor to trade up. But I think at number two, this is a quarterback spot. It's just, who do I prefer? And by the way, Antonio Harris is just a freak left tackle prospect. He is the best player in the draft, almost certainly. Guy's a freak. I mean, almost surely the best left tackle I've ever seen in, in Madden 23. Only 21 years old, too. I, I mean, uh, pretty unbelievable. I'd love to be able to draft him, but it just doesn't make sense to. And following the career of a generational offensive tackle, it's probably not a video that's going to draw in a ton of views. I think it's one of these guys. Do I want Glenn Robinson from Bama? Or do I want the other one? Glenn Robinson's a pretty good athlete. And Ramon Gomez is not, but does have a cannon or an arm. And really good player notes. The player notes are what kind of would be pushing me more towards him as a player. I would say Glenn Robinson's player notes are not quite as good. I don't I don't know which would really matter more in simulation. Brennan Peters looks like he could be okay as well, but I don't like his player notes at all. It, it does actually matter for quarterback for sure. 
I'm going to get crazy. I'm going to get crazy. Antonio Harris is the pick at number two overall. I'm going to do it. Now, is he? He doesn't. Okay, whatever. I don't really know if that matches. Um, 90 strength, 74 speed, 85 acceleration. Just a really good player. Sometimes I just can't help myself. I just draft the best player in the draft if I think I have a shot at it. So I did that there. And now you're like, how are you going to get a quarterback? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to wait to probably now, and I'm going to make a trade. Titans need a left tackle. I'm sorry, Trevor. I'm sorry, buddy. Got to trade you. I'll make it work. All right. Number nine projected next year. We're really going for it. <laughs> we are really going for it. The quarterback I'm going to take with, of course, Ramon off the board is none other than Glenn Robinson from Alabama. 6'5", 230, is 23 years old, but I think he is just the best option for us at this point. Only normal development, of course. Ugh. 94 throw power, 79 speed, 89 acceleration, 93 change of direction. Why do you have to have normal development? I hate this game. He's a bust. I get it. Round two, pick two. Do I have anyone on my draft board here? Nobody. I don't really see the value. I don't really see the value in this class, which means we are going to get fancy. What do I need more than anything? Probably a linebacker, another linebacker. You could make an argument for a receiver, but I think it ends up being linebacker in the end. Going to trade Elante Taylor. Going to trade picks. And we are going to get a pretty good linebacker. Okay, trading a lot to Taylor, my second second round pick, so not the one at like 34 or whatever, and a fourth for Jordan Brooks. He's going to come in and start, of course. But now I'm wondering if I can't turn this top of the second round pick into either a first next year, since we don't have one because I traded away, or like an aging star receiver. Now, I don't know if that's going to end up working out but I might try it. And that's going to end up being DeAndre Hopkins. Number 34 gets this nuke from the Cardinals on the market right now, but this, of course, is 2025, not 2023 like it is in real life, which still sounds like such a crazy year for it to actually be. 2023 seems wild, but uh, that is that's an interesting trade. I think we get a better trio of receivers now, of course. Is DeAndre Hopkins a great option for the future? No, but he's a good option for right now, and that's where we're trying to be competitive. Okay, draft recap. This is going to be really interesting to see what this quarterback is rated. So the, the tackles is 79, which is, I think, the highest rated offensive tackle I've seen this year. Maybe one's been in the 80s, but I don't know. 79 is really, really good. Uh, so he's already an upgrade over Trevor Penning. Now, the quarterback, unfortunately, is only a 73. It's not terrible, but, I, you know, it's not great. And uh, the other quarterback was also a 73. So it was a little bit better of a draft class. We did get the best overall by quite a bit, 79 compared to 76. Was the quarterback that the Rams took a better option? Well, he does have star or better development. Still has a cannon. Yep, same overall. If his dev trait is star or better, or star, I won't be bad. But if it's better, I'll be a little bit upset. It's only star. For quarterback, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to start the rookie left tackle. Probably doesn't have superstar X factor because I, I don't even know if offensive linemen can really get that. Uh, Robinson has normal dev, but will start over Derek Carr. It just has to happen. And then the rest of the team, not much changes, but bringing in DeAndre Hopkins, I feel like... Should be big. And then defensively, Jordan Brooks kicks outside. I think Chanel is currently listed at a right outside linebacker. So Jordan Brooks will play the left. So team looks pretty good. Ed Oliver getting superstar X Factor is pretty cool. And then specialist wise, Oliver and Cansey, Highsmith and Davenport with Edmonds and Brooks. I like that. Porter can stay in the nickel. And then I guess DeAndre Hopkins in the slot. Why not? We could use a power back. Maybe there's a good one in free agency because Jameer Gibbs doesn't really fit that mold. So let's try that. And then I'll simulate to the midseason mark. Oh, Ramondre Stevenson is exactly what I'm looking for. Probably couldn't ask for a better one. That is perfect. Bucks are 7-0. We are 2-4. and four. Why is our defense so bad? That's what I don't get. 
Number 10 in, in passing yards per game, number 11 in rushing yards per game, yet we are dead last, allowing 33.3 points per game. Our team is being upgraded, 85 offense, 88 defense. Why are we so bad? So it is the next day. A lot has happened. I just recorded that little preview saying, hey, um, the Panthers made a crazy in real life trade to move up to number one. And as you guys saw, this is not going that well for us at two and four. The only thing we really can do is simulate to the playoffs. Whether or not we're going to be participating is another issue. But some of these potential re-signings are going to be tough. I mean, Derek Carr now down to a 71 overall is just not usable. I, I don't really know what I can do with him. Give him backup quarterback money. He's not going to want to take it. I just cannot bring Derek Carr back. We can't build around him, unfortunately. And then for Ramondre Stevenson, I'll give him backup running back money. That's fine. We'll retain him. Probably didn't even have to pay him, but we'll keep him around. Chris Olave wants a big-time extension. We are going to have to do it. We're going to have to. We don't really have a, a say in the matter. But Marcus Davenport is kind of the big one where do I really want to allocate upwards of 10 mil per year to a pass rusher who's only an 80 overall, already at that point of regression at 28. It's just not going to happen either. So at two and four, at the midseason mark, he is certainly a potential trade candidate. We'll try to extend Leo Chanel here. He's going to want a little bit more. And then Rashid Shahid, there's not really a point, is there? And I'm kind of surprised the team really isn't performing and I'm also confused as to why we don't know the development trait of Antonio Harris. Seven snaps away. Again, that <laughs> he doesn't really look like his, his picture, I'll tell you that much. But then defensively, we got Highsmith. Peyton Turner has star dev now. That's right. So Peyton Turner is just going to start at right end for us. That's where we are now. Now, he's not a long-term solution. Far from it. But Marcus Davenport is getting traded. I still think we can make a run. The team is good. We just haven't performed up to this point, which is all right. But Davenport, maybe we'll get a pickback or something. We are trading Marcus Davenport, Derek Carr, and Rashid Shahid to the LA Chargers for a first round pick. I hope that the Chargers end up playing really badly. The Bucks are 7-0 if I didn't make note of that yesterday when I recorded. But yeah, a little bit of a, a sell-off here for us at the deadline simulates the playoffs. I don't really think we got much worse. I'm just uh, a little bit disappointed in this team right now. I think we should be performing better than two wins at week eight. Seven and 10 again, the offense, number 17. Defense really performing terribly. Number 30, despite the 87 overall, I have to figure out what it is that is really holding us back. But I just saw something absolutely ridiculous. No shot, Anthony Richardson almost threw for 6,000 yards. 700 attempts! This is unbelievable. If you go to the Bucks, you're going to throw for a league record <laughs> attempts every year. 49 touchdowns. What about rushing? 131 yards and a touchdown. So they don't really account for his scrambling ability. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. Uh, Chargers found their quarterback, by the way, apparently. Lance Carter. Sounds like a boy band member. Uh, doesn't look good other than 99 throw power. What am I seeing, man? All right. Saints, our guy, Glenn Robinson, rookie, 4,200 yards, 31 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Hopefully, we'll move up to star dev. We got something here. Just got to develop him. Rushing, Jameer Gibbs, not great. He's going to get over that four yards per carry hump, though. It's a little bit of a hurdle. I think because he's so low as an elusive back that it's really hurting his ability to run the ball. Not ideal. He's got really high juke move, though. It's it's just the ball carrier vision is so low. Receiving DeAndre Hopkins was good. Juwan Johnson was pretty good. <laughs> Definitely for a tight end. Olave, solid. Just nothing exceptional. And then defensively, Tremaine Edmonds and Jordan Brooks racked up the tackles. 19 tackles for loss for Ed Oliver. 18 for Highsmith, who also recorded a team lead. 14 and a half sacks. 9 and a half for Oliver. And then five picks for Marshawn Lattimore led the way. We just could not put it together. Young quarterback growing pains, whatever. That's all right. We're going to take it on the chin and we're going to move on to the next year. We got to look to extend, you know, a player or two before free agency. We might have to open up the checkbook, get a big time edge rusher in here. Chiefs beat the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow wins league MVP. Ooh, Nathaniel Hackett, coach of the year. Interesting. 
And then we actually didn't have anybody for offensive or defensive rookie of the year, which is okay at first glance. There's still a chance we won a league-specific thing that would get us a boost anyway. Not saying that's the case, but there is potential for it. We'll have a, a little over 60 mil that we can spend. Robinson did not get upgraded. Harris does have superstar development. Pretty nice. We need something, man. We need, we need an upgrade. Marshawn Lattimore has superstar if he didn't have it already. Alex Highsmith to superstar X-Factor. He's 29, though. He's not really developing like we need him to, which is unfortunate. But the team is good. We just need to we need to take that next step up to greatness. Could potentially trade an interior defensive lineman to pick up a stud edge. Could use another off-ball linebacker. Morale is currently impacting overall quite a bit. Kincaid could potentially start at strong safety, but that's not ideal. I think we're just going to go into free agency with the best player available mindset. Bring in a difference maker. Chanel is not going to get brought back. We were looking to replace him anyway. We could potentially re-sign him, but not right here. And then Chris Oladokun, no. Nobody. Show me a good free agent. Garrett Wilson? Derek Brown, we don't really need. I mean, Garrett Wilson, we also don't really need. But he kind of wants to be here. He's definitely an upgrade. I'm going to offer him. We know we love our Ohio State receivers. Going to offer Garrett Wilson. And we'll have a little bit more flexibility. Garrett Wilson has signed. He knows where home is. Ohio State receivers. Ohio State players in general. Head down to the Saints. We'll be happy to have you. And I would say that gives us a little bit of flexibility. Now, we just signed Olave. Fun little teammate combo. Uh, but DeAndre Hopkins is 34 years old. I guess we have four good receivers, which is nice. But DeAndre Hopkins is somebody that is going to be regressing. It's interesting that playmaker is his top archetype. I would not say that's true at all. I, I would say physical for DeAndre Hopkins. I would guess physical would have been his thing. But playmaker, he's got really high juke and spin move, which is kind of surprising to me. Just... Um, Maybe the way he's regressed has changed him into a playmaker. I would have been shocked if he started as that, but maybe so. But that is a big-time addition for us. Could potentially trade DeAndre Hopkins. Could do that. Or, now that we have really good receivers, we could go to Buck's offensive playbook and try to light it up through the air. Although, our quarterback, man. Are we going to find ourselves in like a Josh Rosen, Kyler Murray situation? 73 with normal dev. I just don't know if that's going to cut it. It's just Derek Carr with, with a younger uh, age on him. I don't know. Gotta love it. Quarterback, top five projection, round two to three talent. Oh, the quarterbacks are terrible, dude. There's nothing here. There's, <laughs> there's nothing. Hopefully we can find a stud edge rusher. That's going to be the difference maker here. If we can find a monster edge rusher that can change our team, which it could, it could really help out. That's going to be who we take. Okay, we pick in the middle of the first round. I use my focus players, uh, scouting focus, whatever, on these top two edge rushers, as well as Kier White, who is an off-ball linebacker with some pretty good athleticism. Ran 4-4-1 at his pro day. Okay, he might have some electric speed. Kier White is good, and that's someone who should be available uh, at number 18 there. The other option is try and trade up for an edge rusher. A power moves is good with a pursuit, a tackle. And he's a pretty good athlete. Not anything exceptional, but pretty good. And then LaShawn Derby, I worry about C tackling, but is a slightly better athlete, I would say. We just don't exactly know about his pass rush ability. So... Do we move up for Nate Franklin? Or do we just wait on Kier White? And maybe we do a combination. Maybe we can... Nah, we probably just can't get both. All right, we're just, we're just going to stay put and take the linebacker. Should be available at number 18. It is what it is. And uh, hopefully it actually is available. Because the round one to two guys, they can actually go in the team sometimes. Which is a little bit scary. David Carr. You know what? <laughs> it you know it, it's fitting it's fitting tell me this linebacker still available dude 
There he is, Kiara White. He's actually down the board quite a bit. I'm going to take him. The pursuit is a little bit bothersome, but I think the athleticism is good enough to where he can end up starting for us at outside linebacker. And welcome to the team. Normal development, because of course it is. Ohio State, I didn't even realize I would have taken him for sure. Uh, but 90 acceleration, 91 speed. Very, very good. A hit power is cool. But obviously the normal development is not what you want to see. And do I have dev trait regression off? Because I feel like those absolutely, I feel like that kills the draft class developments. I really think it does. We just draft Carlos Jennings. Kind of a meatball. A block shed, but B power moves, B tackle. He's got a little bit of pass rush ability to him. Really more of a defensive tackle. I, I, don't, I would work for a 3-4, which is not really what I'm rocking with. Not a good enough athlete. I don't know. We're kind of out of luck here. Chiefs offered us a first round pick to move back. So uh, we did. We traded out of this draft with our second round pick and picked up a first round from them next year. It's probably going to be real late, but at least we get something. Really interesting quarterback build here from Dorian Saban from Syracuse. Accuracy is decent enough. And when you see his athleticism, it's got a lot of elite on there. Like nothing super important, but maybe it impacts him positively. Is normal development, but Throw power is not great. Speed, change of direction are really good. Agility, acceleration, really good for a quarterback. Didn't really know what to do with that pick. I think I'm going to let the CPU take a couple swings. So Kier White is actually a 74 overall. The quarterback we drafted is a 70, so not too bad. But Joaquin Vallejo, whose picture looks crazy. It looks like somebody took it at sunset. What's up with the big shadow on his face when this is a computer-generated thing? Like, they could have... <laughs> They could have had it look any way they wanted to, but they wanted to take a picture of him at sunrise. It's crazy. Um, he's is a 70 overall, though. I don't know. I think this draft class could have been pretty good. Well, let's go ahead and see. So the number one player was a running back who's a 78, 77 receiver here. I feel like draft classes at the start of the year were just so much better than they are now. I, I feel like you'd have to be so lucky. <laughs> to even get anyone close to an 80. It's And most of the, the players are just bad. Most of them are unusable. I don't know what's going on, but the entire reason that franchise is usually fun for me is the ability, or at least the chance, the opportunity to draft good players. And I don't know what happened to that, but it doesn't happen to me anymore. I know I got this sick left tackle, but... For the most part, I mean, look at who's the stud that we drafted. Who's even a stud that we've seen in the draft? Not many. Here, White going to play right outside linebacker for us. His overall jumps up to a 75, 76 with morale. We need a big time edge rusher. I don't know how we can get it done. The team should not be bad. Do I just, do I go to Buck's playbook? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to. I don't know what else to say. Let's have a year. We have the talent. I think let's make it happen because last year was super disappointing. I feel like we were one of the better teams in the league and we really did not play like it. We've got talent on both sides of the ball. I think we should be one of the highest rated teams in the league. And I think our playbooks are good. Don't really know the reason that we've had no success up to this point, but I think this season's going to be different. We're going to maximize our receivers, take a little bit of the heat off of our running back, Jameer Gibbs, who really hasn't performed a ton up to this point. And we're going to be, we're going to be awesome. And that's more like it. Five and one at the midseason mark. Although so are the Cardinals. Our offense is number 11, but the defense finally took that big step up to number two. Although the Cardinals are crushing it. What's the deal with the Cardinals? Did they change coaches? I know they did in real life, obviously, but in the game, what can explain this? Nope. Just all of a sudden, at least for the first half of the season, they are incredible. Our offense, I think, I mean, they're, they're, they're fine. Not amazing right now. Some big free agents as well. Oh my goodness. It's the, it's the entire team. That's what it is. We do have 96 million to bring those guys back. However, most of them don't even want to be here. And I think the interest level for a lot of these guys is going to be largely in part due to our current success rate, which is not a lot. Xavier McKinney is back. I'm going to wait on the rest of these free agents. Maybe Zay Flowers can get extended. 
But I'm going to wait on the rest of these free agents or pending free agents because I think their interest would change with a really good season. So let's go ahead and make the playoffs, which we should. Okay, playoff time. This is where we should see success. Show me 11 plus. 9 and 8, and we snuck into the playoffs. Oh my goodness. Why are we so bad? Our offense was 24th in the league. Defense got a whole lot worse. We threw the ball a lot. Dude, it's, it's just got to be Chiefs playbook. 89 overall team. We at least made the playoffs. So that's nice. Glenn Robinson threw for over 5,000 yards, 39 touchdowns, 12 picks. It's a good year. Jameer Gibbs, man, don't give him the ball. We got to stop doing that. And then receiving Garrett Wilson, have a year. And we had three receivers go over 1,000 if you include the tight end, Juwan Johnson. And Chris Olave was right there. DeAndre Hopkins, great season. Garrett Wilson was tremendous. And then defensively, you know, we're putting up similar numbers. Highsmith, 18 tackles for loss, 13 sacks. Peyton Turner and Ed Oliver knocking on the door of double digits. And then Jordan Brooks brought in five interceptions. The defense played well. The offense, we passed well. But the Cowboys are going to be a really difficult team to beat in simulation. They are going to be a huge, huge challenge. It's 2026. I don't want to go too many more years. But how do I not go at least one more after this? We really just haven't had the success. I don't want to not even have a playoff run for you guys. We are out early. We're headed to the offseason. We got some big-time players to potentially bring back. It's going to be tough to do it. We're going to probably utilize the franchise tag on somebody, I would imagine. And maybe somebody retired who just got a huge influx of cash. Titans beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl, the A.J. Brown Bowl. Dak wins MVP. No awards for us. Tyler Boyd with the Titans win Super Bowl MVP. He kind of feels like he'd be a Titan receiver. I could see that. Oh, now even more money. Tyron Matthew may be retiring. Is that the case? DeAndre Hopkins is gone. So that might be the big one. He's had another year left on his contract. Yeah, Shaq Mason goes as well. But DeAndre Hopkins frees us up a little bit of money. So that gives us a little bit more flexibility. And we do have more interest. I mean, Marshawn Lattimore, at least. Some other guys are not too keen on remaining Saints. It's just, we have a lot of players to bring back. Peyton Turner, we have to let walk. Elijah Cansey really has not developed very much. How much money do you want? That's nothing. Okay, we could do that. Marshawn Lattimore extension, yes. And the difficult one's going to be Ryan Ramchek. Do you only want a one-year deal? Okay, that's perfect. I'm going to have to give you three. And Ryan Ramchek is back. 68 mil. Jameer Gibbs, I want to bring back. I know he hasn't been very good for us. But he's such a high overall that I, I really think we're going to be able to get him going at some point. Tyron Matthews cheap enough that we're going to bring him back. Don't really know what his role is going to be. Joey Porter Jr. we're going to need. We still have 47 mil. We're able to bring back pretty much everyone who we need to. When you have a rookie quarterback, you're able to do that because you're not paying a ton of money uh, to that position. So you're, oh, you're going to test free agency control? Okay. Well, everyone else is going to go. We could still offer on one or two huge free agents if we want to. I'm still looking for that big-time edge rusher. I need one to be available. Brian Burns or, I mean, Rashawn Gary even. Somebody big. I don't. I think Gary was just in the other free agent class. Somebody big has to be here. Jawan Johnson goes up to superstar dev. Glenn Robinson goes up to star. This is big time. And then defensively, something looks different. I can't put my finger on it. Maybe it's just Peyton Turner being gone. Either way, I mean, this is our window. It's right now. It's now or never. We need a big-time edge rusher, and I think the team is going to be as close to complete as it can get. Bring in a big-time edge rusher. We need somebody sick to be here. Cup, no, it's all receivers. It is all receivers. Christian Gonzalez, superstar dev. Do we need a big-time corner? I don't think I don't think so with Greg Newsom. Miles Murphy is going to have to be the one. Bijan's here too. <laughs> Close to home, Nevada. It's from Arizona, but you can't set that in the draft class. Uh, Miles Murphy, we got to pay him whatever he wants. It's a lot of money. We got to do it. And you know what? I'm tempted to bring in Bijan as well. Have a little thunder and lightning type deal. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get Miles Murphy. I don't think we're going to get Miles Murphy. 
Maybe we get Bijan, but I think it's doubtful. We got Miles Murphy. We stole him from Jacksonville. We needed it so badly. We needed Miles Murphy to sign so badly. Okay, that's big. Devon A. Chain is here. Wants to be in Louisiana. We'll bring in Devon A. Chain. We'll have three running backs now. Ramondre Stevenson wasn't getting it done. I mean, maybe we get Devon A. Chain. I don't think that's going to be a big difference maker one way or the other. I need Jameer Gibbs to be better. Plain and simple, but he keeps getting upgraded into receiving back. And that is not helping us. Okay, NFL draft time. This is the final year. We got to make it work. This is 2027 at this point. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Now, I looked at some of these top players. I could potentially move up. Edge is something I'm at least considering still, even after getting Miles Murphy. Now, Jalen Powers is the one that intrigued me the most here. B Pursuit is not great. Doesn't look that great, but elite speed coming off the edge. He's a pass rusher. A finesse moves, A awareness, B hit power, B pursuit. There are things to like. And there's actually a pretty good mid-round tight end option as well. So we might end up drafting him. So I want, I want to keep my third round pick, and I want to move up for one of those edge rushers, or specifically one of those edge rushers. Not like one of those, but only one. Jalen Powers, let me just say that. Also, great name. If he is available at pick number three, he is ours. Let's call Atlanta. Mm, well, Atlanta's in our division. Listen, it's 2027, dude. We're going to have to get over it. Oh, I have two first round picks. This is perfect. Perfect timing. Can I just trade both of them? Yeah, I can. Okay, we've moved up to number three. Probably could have even gone as high as two. But I think our player, I don't, I mean, we, there goes an outside linebacker. That could have been really unlucky for us. All right, let's go ahead and draft him. Jalen Powers from Arkansas. Welcome to the team. Hidden Dev. I forgot what it was like to even see that. 86 speed is great. 89 acceleration is phenomenal. And then A finesse moves, A awareness. We know he's going to be rated fairly well. What have I done? Okay, nothing. So it turns out that Chiefs draft pick was incredibly valuable because it enabled us to move up for what seems to be a pretty good player, potential cornerstone. And let me go ahead and draft, probably could get both of these guys, but a 6'6", 270-pound tight end that ran well. I think I said this earlier, but this guy looks unbelievable. Hidden development, finally. 84 speed and acceleration, strength and agility, pretty good, all things considered. What a, what a draft for us so far. We'll simulate draft recap. I think we've done well here. Mm, somewhat. 74 overall for Jalen Power. 73 for Brian Farmer. And then we had a defensive tackle, Marion Sanford. Also hidden development. 6'3", 286. Good strength, good speed, finesse moves. Very good acceleration, great. That is essentially Kalaja Kansi. I don't really need him, but good depth, I guess. And again, it's another draft class that doesn't look so good. Although, what great value from Ty Newberry down the board. 77 overall, very strong, not a pass rusher. These draft classes suck. It's kind of what I need more. I need more. Okay, this has got to be, this has got to be the final team. There are good players here. There really are. But they just need to start playing well. Mid-season mark, we're four and three. Currently third in the NFC South. Panthers are five and one. Bucks are four and two. It's our offense. Our defense is doing a fine job. Our offense sucks. God, it's it's got to be quarterback. What else could it be at this point? It's got to be quarterback. It has to be. He's only a 76. I get it. It's understandable. His accuracy. Oh, it's so bad. This guy, guy can't throw. Unfortunately. It's it is unfortunate. That's what I got for you. We might miss out on the playoffs. I, I hope we put it together we, and we really find a way to sneak in. Last year, we were off to such a great start and completely blew it. Maybe this season will be a second half team. Let's hope. And we made the playoffs, although the NFC South is a bloodbath. We, bloodbath. we finished third at 11-6. 
what is happening in this division, dude? I hate it here. Glenn Robinson, I mean, it's a good year. 4,500 yards, 33 touchdowns to only four interceptions. Rushing, Jameer Gibbs was finally good. 4.3 yards per carry, 1,200 rushing yards, nine touchdowns. Receiving, Garrett Wilson was still great. Juwan Johnson putting up numbers. Olave, Zay Flowers doing the job. Jameer Gibbs, tremendous as a receiving back, by the way. What a year. But we have barely managed to make the playoffs. And we're so good. I don't get it. 17 tackles for loss for Murphy, 16 for Oliver, 12 for Highsmith, 11 for Kalijah Kansi. Alex Highsmith had 19 sacks. It's incredible. Ed Oliver at 11 and a half. That's a great year. Eight for Murphy, five for Kansi. So many different players had interceptions. And Rashad Kincaid's the interesting one because I don't know really how he was getting on the field so much. But he had three picks. So good on him. Our offense was just middle of the pack, though. Our defense, I guess, is the big reason that we got here. Austin Adebo with an upgrade. It's never a guy that we actually need to upgrade that for the importance and the success of the team. It's always, hey, here's your fourth corner. Give me the quarterback, please. All right, Tyre Matthew going to retire. Listen, it's the last ride, last hurrah for me as well. We have morale. We better beat the piss out of the Seahawks, too. But they're an 88 overall. They're incredible. They're going to beat us. Let's play it cool. I don't think we get any bonus for that. Yeah, I don't I don't want the Seahawks fired up to play us. Forget that. All right, wild card time. I'm jumping in. I have to. It is 2027. I've got a 90 overall team, and we are struggling to make the playoffs. Struggling. We're headed to Lumen because CenturyLink couldn't renew the sponsorship, and we're going to take them out, and we're down 7 nothing. We got the football first, too. Okay, things are tied up. We're ahead, 14 to seven. Keep piling it on, find the end zone. 17-7, 24-7. We need to win 24-7, we need to play better 24-7. It's 31-17, Seahawks I think are getting back in this thing. Nope, defense holds strong, perfect. We're out of the wild card, I'm stressed out at this point. I am stressed out. Quarterback's completing 52% of his passes in a playoff game. On to the divisional, it's the Bucks. 85 overall team, you know, 12 and 5 with a very similar schedule, probably, given they play in our division. I'm sick of them, dude. Look at that retirement home team. How old is Shaq Barrett and Mike Evans at this point? How old are they? They can't be less than 34 years old. And they got home field advantage, too. The Tampa Bay Geriatrics. You know what? It makes sense because Florida is where old people go to die. And that's what this Bucks team is doing right now. 17 to 3. Keep going. 27 to 3. You don't have Tom Brady. You can't come back from that. It's over. It's over. We came to play in the playoffs. Finally. Finally, dude. 30 to 10. Big win. Command. Everyone's going 12 and 5. How is everyone winning this amount of games? There's nothing that's not going to piss me off right now. That's, that's what this comes down to. Even a Super Bowl win, I'll be like, about time. Yeah, we should. We should be winning the Super Bowl. Got to face the Commanders. The Commanders, they don't belong in the same field as us, yet they get home field advantage. Jonathan Allen, Chase Young, Terry McLaurin. Let's take him out. Got Jackson Smith and Jigba, and they have him on a kickoff. Listen, they got Terry McLaurin. They have Jackson Smith and Jigba. They are trying to build the Ohio State receiving court. Look across the field, fellas. You're not beating this. Well, they're beating us right now. We take the lead. 17-14. Keep it up. More points. More. 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 <laughs> it's 45-14. A massacre. Glenn Robinson, three touchdown game. That's a lot more like it. We are headed to the Super Bowl. Finally. And it's the Chiefs. They're 91 overall, man. I got Patrick Mahomes, of course. Probably Travis Kelsey. Tyre Matthews like, dude, I'll die on the field right now. He's going to retire. Well, we better win then. Ooh, Jameer Gibbs is up to a 99 overall. I upgraded elusive back up to an 89. Ball carrier vision goes up. He should be a monster. Should be a monster. I'm a little bit upset that elusive back isn't higher. Antonio Harris, by the way. This is turning into quite the draft pick. 
the power element is not there despite having 94 strength. Explain that to me. But he is into the high 80s already. Superstar Dev is a game changer on the offensive line. Because uh, what is Trevor Penning right now? Probably an 81? Maybe? I don't even know if it's that high. So Antonio Harris up to an 89 with morale. Where is Trevor Penning? You know what? He is a true 80 overall, playing up to an 83 with morale. We made the right decision. We made the right decision. Had to be done. Andrew Thomas, hey, not too bad. 96 overall pass protector. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. I would love a world where Andrew Thomas turns into the best tackle in football. That would be so sick. But this is the final team. Any dev trade upgrades to make it look nicer? Hmm... Not that I can tell. We don't know Farmer's dev trait, but it's probably star. It is. Jordan Brooks up to superstar. Like to see that. And Jalen Powers has star as well. All right, here we go. Chiefs 91 overall. We are right there. I mean, this is a winnable game for us. I think maybe the first time I'm showing optimism the entire time after making this run is going to be our downfall. I have to keep it negative and we're going to get blown out. Let's get the Chiefs with a tie. Greg Newsom, 57-yard interception, and we don't even score off it. We're down 14-0. 21-3. to All we're doing is putting up field goals against Patrick Mahomes. Oh, it's it's over, dude. We can't score. Give me give me one series. Oh my god, dude. It's it's over. It's already over. I just gotta shut up. And I accidentally pump fake. We're going for it. You know why? Because we're down 31 to 6. Goodness gracious, dude. And we, we get bumped. We get bumped with Olave. Thankfully, he catches it. Can we get one more playoff? My quarterback has multiple interceptions. Snap the ball. Snap the ball. Cancel play action. Up the seam. Right down the middle, Garrett Wilson. Good way to end the third quarter. I'm going to try to make a comeback, but... I don't know how we could possibly pull this off. Look at Zay Flowers. You really didn't get into the end zone there? I mean, I have no idea what it's going to take to win this game. <laughs> now, that's actually really funny. Let me, let me break that one down for you guys. Let me break that one down for you guys. I'm going to break my controller... It's, I, how could I even be mad at the controller? Controller did nothing wrong. Controller and human inputting the controller did everything right. High point throw to my tight end in the red zone. Make sure that it gets over this player. Make sure. That's what a high point throw does. You know what my quarterback does? He says, I don't know how to throw it high. Inaccurate. Why? Because it fucking said so. No reason. Look at this. Unbelievable. It's a disaster. I try to throw a high point pass. He's like, did you mean laser throw it into the ground? Throws it right to the just lurking linebacker. It could not have been a worse throw. I high pointed this. You'd set it on the screen. Does that look like it's a high throw? Did that look like he threw it into the first row of the stands? No, it, it was about 20 yards under thrown, realistically. Hey, and that's the ball game. Chiefs win the Super Bowl 31, Saints 13. Our quarterback completed 44% of his passes, had three interceptions minimum in the end. Uh, Patrick Mahomes dominated us to the tune of exactly 300 yards and four touchdowns. Not that it matters a ton, but it kind of does. His completion percentage was 21 points higher. And that's going to do it for the rebuild. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Man, was this a blast. I'm glad I sat back down to record this because, wow, what a great end to my night. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, subscribe for more fun. Take it easy.